Welcome to the Alpha Girl Confidence Podcast, where we are empowering youth female athletes to play and live confidently. My name is Shay Hatto, and each week I will bring you new episodes to teach you the strategies and tools that you need in order to live a confident, empowered life both on and off the playing field. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to episode 160. I am so excited for you to listen to this episode where I got the chance to sit down with my old college coach, Trevor Waxman. So Trevor has been a college coach for over 20 years and is not only one of the best coaches that I've ever played for, but also just one of my favorite human beings. He is a very knowledgeable coach, one of the best coaches I've ever met in terms of building relationships. And so I'm so excited for you to listen to this episode where we dive into how to properly prepare for playing at the college level, how to prepare mentally, how to prepare physically, how to deal with the ups and downs of playing time, which for me was one of the hardest things I ever had to deal with during my college career. So we go deep into playing time, how to deal with the ups and downs, whether you're a college player or a youth player. And we also talk about why taking personal responsibility is the missing key to to success for a lot of players, regardless of the age. So I'm so excited for you to dive into this episode to learn from Trevor. And if it's helpful for you, please leave us a review. Please share it with a friend and hope you enjoy the episode. What's up, Trev? Welcome to the podcast. It's been a long time coming. So glad we were finally able to get you on. Excited to be here. So Trevor, um, I, so Trevor and I, a little, a little backstory, Trevor and I, he was my coach at Utah state, all of my three and a half years at Utah state. And we still keep in touch. I would say what you call me probably every month, call me and bug me about once a month, at least. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Sometimes I bug you. Sometimes you bug me, but yeah. Yeah. Try to keep up with previous players and see what they're up to for sure. Yeah. So when we'll kind of get into the whole relationship part of it too, but um, give the, give the audience a little backstory on who you are, um, kind of your soccer background, your coaching background, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, been doing this as pretty much as far as I can remember, I started coaching when I was 15, just with, with little kids and things like that, when I, where I grew up in steamboat and, um, never left it um so so that was like 50 years ago yeah not quite I'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) so yeah like 30 years of youth coaching though involved in youth coaching um was a college soccer coach um for 21 years um been on a six-month hiatus from that I guess and we'll see if I end up back in that realm but um love the game and really can't imagine doing anything else even though at some point may have to, but um, definitely what I enjoy and have had lots of great experiences with coaches and players and learned a lot, but still learning. So. And you're coaching youth now. Yeah. Yeah. Working with Utah Avalanche, um, which you're familiar with the club, obviously, Um, but working with players in Cache Valley, as well as just kind of on the director's board, just talking with the whole um, program just on direction and and things like that. We have regular directors meetings and things. So get to add input to not just the players I'm working with, but the club as a whole. Yeah. I I would consider you, uh, for all the soccer freaks out there, Trevor is the definition of a soccer freak. I would say. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I may spend too much time on FIFA too. So. Oh, always either playing actual soccer FIFA or watching soccer I feel like every time I talk to you you're doing one of or coaching soccer you're doing one of those things yeah probably not playing too much anymore not anymore but you used to you used to jump in with us and you know and really you know give us hell and stuff so that was not fun for us but kind of fun for us because we would you know try to mess with you a little bit but it was fun yeah I may have pulled a hamstring or two playing (laughs) with the college players (laughs) <laughs> for sure. For sure. Cool. So let's get into, I want to kind of focus on, um, the college prep side of things. So there's a lot of, you know, girls listening where they're, I don't know, juniors, seniors, kind of that high school age where they're trying to get ready, you know, for college and you being a college coach of 21 years, I'd say you're kind of an expert. Um, so 
kind of let's go for the jugular first. And um, I want you to be totally honest here, but where do you feel like when girls come in for like preseason camp, where do you feel like they fall short, whether it's physically, mentally, like where, where do you see, what gaps do you see? I think, yeah, I think overall, it's probably, you can sum it not into one thing particular, but it's preparation um, and being prepared. And it's hard, I think, transitioning from the youth game to the college game, whether it's just that senior year to go into college or even once you get to college, because so much of your soccer career to that point is just laid out for you. You know, your coaches, your youth coaches, your club coaches, your high school coaches tell you when to practice, what to practice. Um, you know, it's, it's so very structured that when you hit that point of, you know, trying to get ready for college, um, you're a little bit left on your own. And obviously the college coaches and things like that will provide you pro plans and things, but your responsibility becomes so much more upon you as a person and, and an individual. Um, and that's where I think players kind of fall short is, is just being prepared for all of it. Um, physically, certainly the fitness levels and things like that um, is where it's most obvious. Yeah. It's overall, it's just kind of, you know, doing the preparation and even things from, you know, the mental skills side of things, the physical side of things, the technique side of things and it's hard for I think players to do a self-evaluation a lot of times and realize that and kind of do some of their own individual planning and and figure out how to prepare themselves so not any one particular but preparation yeah. and just the things you can control going in is where I think a lot of players fall short yeah, I think for me, I remember like, you know, I, I, my freshman year was VCU. So I remember getting the packet and I didn't really like, I kind of did some of the like strength training and like skill work. But for me, I was so, and you know this about me, I hate fitness, right? Like I was so terrified of like fitness tests and like that kind of stuff that I like only focused on the fitness stuff. And my freshman year of college at VCU, I was like really, really fit, like the most fit that I've ever been. Um, and so for me, it was like, I only was, I was like a very one dimensional and I didn't even really focus on the technical side or the mental side. And I know you're a big mental person too, we'll say, yeah. you know, the sports psychology stuff, like you have a good background in that. So it, going to the preparation part, like what do you feel you know, high school players can do mentally to prepare? I think, you know, with, because, you know, the culture is so much about being kind of guided through so many things. Yeah. I think having, you know, resources like yourself and things like that um, is taking advantage of those. Um, and you may have to seek it out um, yourself, but, you know, there's obviously some things that are very challenging on the mental skills side of things that you, that take time because they're called skills for a reason, right? They, right. They're things that you have to work on and they're not just there automatically. Um, and there's things though that are easy that can kind of be simple little things to help players deal with certain issues. So I think, you know, having access or seeking out access to, to some people that can help you um, is probably a smart move. Um, and especially people that have been through it before, sometimes it maybe it's teammates um, that have already gone to college that you played high school with, or, you know, other people that have mentors that have been in the college game or things like that. I think those are, those are great resources that, you know, actually hearing mm -hmm. the stories. And I know, you know, with your book, that was what I said I loved. It was just, it's so relatable to to players you know and it's not sugar-coated or anything like that you mm -hmm. had your challenges and and whatnot so having somebody to be able to empathize with them and and say hey I didn't deal with this so great but this is how you can right um, but but you know nothing wrong with leaning on people with experience or either in the field or or actual experience as a college player and, and that's the cool thing about like the, the days and it hasn't been that long. I mean, I don't know how many years since I was, you know, 10, 15 years since I was, you know, in that position of playing college for the first time. But like, I feel like it, there's been so much change in, in like the access and the information that you can get so easily online, whether it's, 
there's obviously there was books, but now like there's more books and there's more coaches you can work with and there's YouTube videos and there's just so much more information that is available for like the mental side of things compared to when I was playing. Um, and it's just like more readily available and more talked about now too. So it's like, take advantage of these, uh, you know, these people and these opportunities and these resources because the whole mental side of it, and we'll get into that a little bit more can totally make or break your college experience, especially your freshman year. Like it is a big transition, right? Yeah. So for, for you, when, when you mentioned, um, you know, you, you mentioned a couple minutes ago, the difference between, you know, college and club, like youth high school club, whatever you want to call it, what would you say are the biggest differences and just like the level of play, the intensity, like that kind of stuff between club and college? I think I, I mean, like I said before, I think the, the individual accountability, yeah. you know, is obviously a team sport, but just that having to do it yourself um, a bit more, you know, earn, earn your playing time, earn your spot, know what you need to do, um, those types of things. But I think yeah. ultimately when the college environment really is, is more of a professional environment yeah. versus mm-hmm. your club in high school, right. um, results matter yeah. that much more. Um, you know, there's people's livelihood on the line, um, mm-hmm. which, you know, f- as a kid playing, that's hard to, to fathom and things like that. And that's understandable because, you know, you do it because you love it. Um, you know, but coaches at that level um, are result driven. And, you know, as much as, you know, playing in college and everything like that, and, and any coach is about relationships with the players and the team. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, you have to make selections that are based on how you think your team needs to play and what you need to do to get results. And that's a little bit of a hard process to, to understand as a player that you, you, see, you see certain things and you make certain things, comparisons, it's natural to make comparisons, but ultimately, you know, that, that coach, that's what's in their mind. There's not a... Um, there's nothing really personal about it. They're they're very much trying to put team result first and, and how do they put that? And there's a lot that goes into that. It can be even, you know, the rotation of subs and things like that. And as a player, that's all hard to, to kind of process. And that's where the mental side really starts to get into it, especially as a freshman, because most players that go to college, especially division one schools, right. They, they were the best players on their Mm -hmm. club teams. Um, And so to go from a a stage of being a starter and playing 90 minutes, essentially your whole life to all of a sudden stepping into an environment where you may struggle a little bit and have a lot to learn or, you know, deal with the physicalness. There's so many different things that can be a very, very, um, you know, sharp awakening (laughs) realization. (laughs) And, and if you get wrapped up into it, you know, you can, you can kind of, um, rule yourself out if you don't handle it. Do you think, do you think the whole playing time thing in your experience coaching is one of the hardest things that, you know, players have to deal with in their college experience? Yeah, for sure. Playing time, especially I feel like rosters, um, have gotten bigger, not smaller. Yeah. And so, you know, you've got, 25 to 32 kids on average on a, on a division one roster. That's a lot of players for not a lot of time every day. And I think, and again, it's, you're you're talking about players that have all played their whole life and played most minutes and things like that. So it's certainly a a hard um, transition to make and, and understanding why, like I said, is, is one of the hardest things. And sometimes you don't really realize it until you're, you're out of college and maybe you start coaching or, or things right. like that kind of understand some of those selection processes. But I think as a coach, even, you know, playing time is, is something that is stressful for coaches too. Yeah, um, sure. You know, cause there's, I don't know a coach that, you know, looks at a player and wishes they weren't playing, you know, they, mm-hmm. they, uh, they want players to perform and contribute and things like that. And a lot of times it's just hard to, 
to put it all together where and you, you just run out of time and and minutes honestly yeah i know like i only you know coached it well i guess i coached at the junior college level too but i didn't really you know handle rotations or anything but that was like the thing i hated the most was like trying to figure out playing time and you know, as a youth coach, like trying to get everyone equal playing time in a sense and that kind of stuff. So I know as a coach, that's hard. And for me as a player, like I honestly, I was used to not getting a lot of playing time before I came to college, like at Avalanche, I, you know, after my injury, my playing time was, was totally up and down. And then in college, it was totally up and down too. my junior year, especially was just peer down. Right. I can, I can remember, uh, the game at Utah, you on the sideline having a yeah. A little bit of a, a breakdown, if I remember yeah. correctly. <laughs> and then, and then Molly, uh, you know, gave it to me and made me realize yeah. that I got to take some personal responsibility. So Molly, if you're listening, thank you. Um, but I, I had a lot of, a lot of breakdowns, but that was, that was more of an outward, um, breakdown, but a lot of it was just me not, not being a good teammate, which I've been very open about. Um, but yeah, it's, it was hard for me. Probably the hardest thing for me was playing time. I didn't know how to deal with that. I definitely handled it the wrong way. So like, let's talk about how do we, how does a player handle it the right way? Like, what are some things they can do? And I know there's maybe no wrong way and right way to handle it, but I don't know, as, as a college coach, what would you, you know, want a player to do? I think. It's, it's funny because I was I just walked the dog for an hour as I do most days. And, you know, a lot of these things kind of go through my head and yeah. even thinking about what we were going to talk about. Um, but I think the interesting thing is, is and I think it's the, the playing time issue at college and how to how to deal with that. Yeah. Um, I think it starts at a younger age, even for the players that are playing a lot. I think, you yeah. know, I don't I think players just in general um have a hard time with the self-evaluation part and Mm -hmm. and kind of realization of how to change their status in a sense yeah because a lot of players that struggle with playing time you know ask what they can do and they they may go out and work on it one day and think okay i'm good now Or, (laughs) or that i had a great week of training this week and so why am i not playing more all of a sudden absolutely and like I said, I think it goes back to even the youth kids because a lot of times, you know, results, you know, it, there's so much result driven mindset kind of thing that they, that players have a hard time separating the performance and the process of how they get something. Um, so if you're not playing a lot, you know, being able to self analyze because a coach can tell you, oh, you need to work on your shooting or first touch or whatever. And, and unfortunately, in the college game, their things move so fast, especially in season right? that, you know, a coach can say, okay, you need to do this, this, and this, but unless you have a, an, a you know, kind of the mindset of how do I change that? How do I truly get better at that? Um, not every coach in every program has the time to, it, it's just a time factor to put in, you know, hours of individual work or things like right. that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's what it's going to take to change you know where you're at and you know even teams have a little my son's team they're they're 11 years old and you know when they struggle they have a hard time objectively looking at it they Mm -hmm. think you know they think referees they think field conditions they yeah whatever and and you know i'll challenge them and go well what do you need to do better as a team or individually to change that and it's 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 even hard you know it's hard for everybody to kind of think about okay we, the game's over how can i how can i change that or i'm not getting playing time yeah. what do i need to do you know and that's again <clears throat> excuse me if they you know are exposed to some of that mental skill stuff early on and and kind of having that you know growth mentality yeah. you know then maybe they can step back and go okay i need to set away, set aside and come 15 minutes early every day for the next three weeks and, and give them something, give themselves something that is actually going to have a concrete effect yeah. on, on maybe that playing time. And unfortunately, you know, hard work isn't always enough. There's, there's I was just going to ask that. Yeah. Other factors, um, you know, that, that, that's a big thing is people, well, I'm doing the work, I'm doing the work. Um, 
yeah. both at training and on my own, but I'm still not getting the playing time. Yeah. You know, it, so the payoff sometimes is hard to see, especially in the short term of a, of a, you know, compact season at the college level. Yeah. Uh, th- there's two things that you were talking about that I want to touch on. The first one was, I, I think you're right in that we always ask other people or ask the coach, what do I need help with? But I think it's really an, an important skill to learn how to look at it objectively and, and ask yourself, what do I need to work on? What, what am I good at? So figuring out your strengths and the things that you really need to work on instead of having to always rely on other people. Um, I never really thought about it like that before, but that's kind of what I, what I got from, you know, when you said that. Well, I know we had a conversation too um, quite a, a while ago, kind of about the, the book. Yeah. And there was a segment mm-hmm. in there. And, you know, I think as players to end as coaches and even parents get so focused on the things that they, that yeah. players aren't good at yeah. and that they have to think, you know, that they have to do. And I think it's just as important, if not more important to focus on kind of that super strength type of mentality. Cause usually if you're selected specifically for, you know, a competitive team or a college team, you're selected because of your strengths, not your weaknesses. Exactly. And, you know, if we just focus on our weaknesses, then certainly, you know, our, our mindset in terms of, you know, we're always evaluating ourselves in a failure sense, instead mm-hmm. of like, I am the best header on the team. I'm going to make sure that everyone knows that. And I'm going to do that. And I know you had Natalie Norris on, on here talking about nutrition, but yeah, she was all, she scored a ton of goals uh, with headers off of corner kicks. And she twice a week was out there getting service, you know, just working on that and just knew that that's how she could make a difference. That was one way she could make a difference for the team. It wasn't a weakness for her, but she was always out there, you know, trying to get better so that, that, that strength helped the team even more. So I think, you know, that's definitely something that that we got to work on our weaknesses, but there's a reason that players are defenders versus attackers. And to say a defender needs to work on shooting, um, you know, yeah, they may need to, but <laughs> right. why not, why not take advantage of the things you're good at? So, yeah, that's definitely like one of the things in the book that, that you've helped change my mindset around too, that I would completely change in the book is focus more on your strengths and your weaknesses, right? Like, especially, you know, as a very, um, niche player, I guess, as a defender, it's like, you don't need to go work on your shot necessarily. Right. But you can go out and we get extra headers in or whatever it is. So, so yeah, I think that's important. And then the other thing too, is a lot of the time I think players think, oh, it's just something technical. That's why I'm not getting playing time. My passes aren't good enough. My shots aren't hard, hard enough, whatever it is. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not at the right fitness level, but how often is it like a physical thing versus maybe an attitude or work ethic or, um, leadership or, or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, our, you know, a lot of your stuff, you, you talk about this, but our mind gets in our own way. Yeah. <laughs> um, where, you know, there's self-fulfilling prophecy type of things going on where you're like, well, I've, I'm good. I've, I've done this, but I'm not good at this and I'm never going to be good at this sort of things. Yeah. And, and those thoughts certainly get in, in the way, you know, um, or looking, you know, kind of that comparison stuff, especially as players on a team sport where you're like, well, I'm not, she's, she's better at that than me. And I'm never going to be able to do that. And again, that kind of goes to the strengths thing. Well, that's fine. Maybe you're not going to shoot the ball as hard as her, but maybe you can finish better than right. them, you know? Um, and so maybe you're, a, you're a finisher rather than just a pure shooter or something like that. So I, I think the mind definitely can easily get in your own way. Um, we see that, you know, and that's, as college coaches, that's one of the reasons you do fitness tests. Um, Cause usually it's not that players aren't fit enough. Yes. It's more of a like mentally, uh, you know, kind of a test of your, your fortitude and your ability to push through things and deal with it adversity and, mm-hmm. and that type of stuff. So yeah, it's tough to, you know, especially if someone hasn't had any experience in that. And, and again, we talked about where players going to the college level are coming from where soccer for a lot of them has been easy to that point. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's hard. Um, and you're dealing with, you know, failures that you haven't dealt with before. And, and 
it, if you don't have some of the mental skills to deal with that, it mm -hmm. certainly can bring you down real quick. And then it's, you know, very much one of those spirals where, yeah, or you're, you're, you are your own worst enemy. And that's where, like you said, attitude can start getting in, into, into account and, and, you know, making it even worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how, how often would you say there's been a player on your team where like skill wise and physically they were good enough, but like mentally they just couldn't get out of your, their own way. Does that, do you see that a lot? Yeah. Unfortunately you see it, I think at all ages, right? Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, there's some players on the, my youth teams right now that, that have a lot of self-doubt or, or lack of confidence for one reason or another, or, you know, there's, there's those players that want to just show up on game day and don't, don't yeah. do the work in training, you know, those types of things. And it, at the youth level, I think, you, you know, players can get away with that um, and still be very successful. And when you, you start advancing up the levels, um, you know, that becomes more and more of an issue. And all of a sudden they've got to change their mentality and ways. And that can be, can, right. can be a challenge if it's become a habit, unfortunately. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, when you, as a coach, you are always trying to, you know, do your best to, to help those players snap out of that. Um, but again, sometimes you just get in your own way um, and don't want to listen or you're stubborn or, or right. different things. And, and it may take a, a teammate or a coach that you just really respect to kind of, you know, put you in your place and say, hey, wait, what are you doing? You're 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 struggling here but yeah and and then and like you said there are resources now that are out there that can help with that a little bit um mm -hmm. you know, and provide some some reflection and you don't have to have somebody smack in right <laughs> kind of out of it like you said molly did on at that point so i mean playing time is just so hard because like i i recently had a parent come to me who um, you know, their daughter wasn't getting playing time and it was just because she wasn't confident. And the mom was like, well, that's not the right way to deal with it. And I, and I agree, but also as a coach, you can't, it's like, especially as a college coach, you can't play someone who isn't producing results because they're not confident. Like that's sorry to say it, but it's not really their issue. Right. So it's yeah. like, there needs to be, I think, a lot more personal responsibility when it comes to playing time. Cause a lot of times it's like, we look to other people and, and, you know, blame other people for a lack of playing time. And then when we don't get it, you know, we're always looking outside of ourselves. So I think one of the biggest things and how to kind of untangle it a little bit is really just taking some more personal responsibility, looking at yourself more objectively. And if you're, if you are struggling with confidence, like, get help to, to uh, help, like get better confidence. Like there's plenty of resources out there. So I think playing time is just like, it can be very messy. And I know that as a coach, it's tough. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, it, we had, you know, kind of several, a lot of times with players have conversations about ability versus form and form is very much a soccer word. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the college level, the players are there because they have the ability. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the form part, there is, you know, a reflection of that ability within the game mm. and, or in training. And like you said, you know, your injury played all sorts of factors on your form, you know, right. and then the injury minus plus playing time, all that stuff, all of a sudden that starts playing with the mental side of things and, and your form can suffer. So, like you said, it, it's, you know, players may focus on a skill thing or something like that, but it, you know, there's, it, it is, it's a, it's a whole package. And uh, often either we ignore the whole package or like you said, you get focused on one thing, thinking that's going to make right. the difference because confidence alone, you know, you can say, oh, player's not confident. Well, why are they not confident? Right. You know, was was it a lack of preparation? Was it, a, is it a lack of ability? Or is it the playing time itself that is yep. getting the lack of confidence? And yeah. like you said, being able to unwrap that a little bit um, is a challenge. And that's where, you know, having some resources to help you with that it, it is a good thing. But yeah, you if you're not confident and you're not playing, unfortunately, you're not going to play. <laughs> and so you're um, not going to build confidence by playing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, a vicious cycle. And that's it where... Is. 
yeah, the ability. And then, and that's where, like I said, I think at the beginning where players kind of struggle is that it's such a, con- at the college level, it's such a condensed, tight time frame where results absolutely matter that it's, yeah. you don't have time to, no, to have a player, you know, kind of, I had a high school coach actually ask me, they said, Hey, if you, if you get a young player, a, a young player and, and you know, they're good and they may be one of the best players on the field. Um, do you work them in slowly or, or do you just throw them in? I was like, you just throw them in. It's yeah, kind of sink yeah. or swim right. um, at the college level. And if you sink, then, you know, it's tough. And that's where I think players, especially at the college level, got to understand that if you get playing time, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. or whatever that, that is, you know, you, you take advantage of that. And yeah. You give it. You give it your everything and all of a sudden that can turn into 10 and maybe it stays at 10 and maybe it grows, but you, you can't, I don't think you can afford to look at it as, as trash minutes or anything like that, but it's an opportunity to, to get in there and and get the job done and, and help your team. So. Yeah, I think that was my biggest looking back on it. Like the thing I was most disappointed in myself for was that junior year, like I just had so much frustration and resentment and anger. I think that when I did get minutes, I was just like, I, I thought of them, like you said, as trash minutes. Like, I don't feel like I really took advantage of them. And then yesterday we were talking about it on one of my coaching calls and one of the younger girls, she's 12 years old. She was like the other day I I got four minutes, but I like played my heart out those four minutes. And I'm proud of myself for playing as hard as I could those four minutes. And it's so true because like, there's so many times where we complain or parents complain that, you know, you're only getting 10, 15 minutes a game, but it's like, can you at least, you know, take full responsibility for those minutes and give it your all? Cause it may be the only 10 minutes you get, you know? And so I think it's really going back to like, really just taking personal responsibility and doing everything you can in those five minutes, 10 minutes, the last one minute of the game. Cause sometimes you know, you go in the last minute and it's like, here you go, here's a minute. <laughs> but like, yeah. what can you do with that minute? Yeah, for sure. And I think it, that does, you know, you've said it a couple of times, the whole idea of the personal responsibility. And that I think has to come from a little bit of the coach and, and parents as mm-hmm. well. Totally, you yeah. know, if you're on the youth level, if you're only getting 10 minutes, you know, it, it needs to be a, a thought process of why am I only getting 10 minutes instead of yeah. the coach only gives me 10 minutes you know, mm-hmm. um, right. and, and a little bit of, you know, how can I change that? Cause I guarantee that the coach, you know, would be happy to give anybody more minutes yeah. if, if they're in a position to, to, to provide for the team. Um, and so again, I think that's where just as coaches, parents, all that, we have to be careful not to, you know, attribute wins, losses, performance to an outside entity and, and be able to look at it and go, well, we won because we did this. Yeah. Um, and we lost or you didn't do well because of this and, and, and make it much more objective instead of, right. you know, just talking about somebody else's attitude or, or sure. external services, you know, um, mm-hmm. services. I don't think circumstances. that's the Circumstances. Circumstances. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think, and that's, you know, as a coach, I think coaches have to be careful on how they, you know, attribute wins and losses in that regard, too, because, you know, saying something like, oh, we were just unlucky, you know, and there's yeah. times where, <laughs> yeah, you're truly unlucky, you know, the, right. that maybe the ball took a funny bounce on the yeah. wet and skipped over somebody's foot, whatever. But if you lose, there's more to it than yeah. And then that one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, getting players to understand the mindset of, okay, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's anything with wrong with saying we, and I, this is dangerous territory, right? Cause you, you have coaches that are very critical and things like that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with necessarily saying we weren't good enough or we're not quite there yet. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Um, and and it being, and, and then having objective reasons why, you know, cause there are coaches I know that are very harsh and be like, you're terrible, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. That is not a healthy environment to be playing no. in and, 
and players and parents should not accept that but yeah there is a there is something okay with saying hey we're just not good enough yet and we can be but this is what you individually have to do this is what as a team what we have to do and i think that honestly would help um, in the long run, even with as players go to college um, and go into those situations that are uncomfortable going, okay, I'm not getting playing time. You know, this is what I need to do yeah. um, and analyze it. And, and instead of saying just the coach doesn't like me or. <laughs> right. And it, yeah, it really does. Like girls, we take everything personally. And I like how you said, you know, a lot of coaches I've heard of there, they just say, Hey, we're not good enough, but you said, we're just not good enough yet. Like adding mm-hmm. that yet, or like, we're not there yet. Like mm-hmm. that's, there's a huge difference between those. Cause, and even then a girl might be like, Oh, the coach said, we're not good enough yet, but the coach is looking at me, right? <laughs> Girls. It's like, everything is about me and boys. It's like, Oh, he's not good enough yet. Yeah. He's not, he's not, <laughs> not coach isn't talking about me. Coach, yeah. I, I, I always work hard. Not talking about me. <laughs> right. So like, like girls that are listening, like realize that when your coach says we, they really mean we, and so stop taking it so personally. And it's, it's not just, you know, you that, that isn't where you need to be yet. It's the whole yeah. team. And so I think that's kind of just a mindset thing is not taking things so personally, because especially at the college level, it's like, it's a results oriented business shall we say, like, like it is a business, Mm -hmm. right? And so it's not that they don't like you or that you're any less of a person or any less of a player, but you're just not fitting the rotation for whatever reason it is. So never attribute playing time to like your self-worth. I think a lot of people, including me, attributed my playing time to how good I was as a player or as a person. And that is what really can destroy confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of that you know, a player and, and character or player in person are definitely very different things. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think there is a, there is a struggle there kind of separating the two, especially when we talk about identity, right. And things yeah. like that, you know, if everything you've always done has been, and I think you talked about it in the book and have addressed it several times, just your identity is tied to certain things that, have been part of your life and all of a sudden you know something is somewhat removed from that and all of a sudden you're questioning Mm -hmm. you know yourself instead of soccer or you know and and that can be like you said very dangerous and a very quick way to to destroy confidence and 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 lose focus of what needs to be done and and yeah Yeah, because it's not just about building confidence as a soccer player or a basketball player. It's about building confidence as a person, because as soon as that sport goes away and it will go away, whether it's you get an injury or you're just done playing, like if you lose that sport and all your confidence is tied to that sport, then your confidence, you won't have any confidence as a person. So I think that's really important. And we all struggle with identity. I know that's something that you're going through right now, too. And it's something I've you know, gone through a lot too, but I, I wasn't even planning on talking about identity, but since you brought it up, like, Mm -hmm. what do you, do you see a lot of the players, the college players that you work with when they go on to, you know, live their lives off the sport? Do you see a lot of players struggling with identity? Um, I don't, I think it, I think it's very independent. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a blanket statement. I think there are players that do, yeah. Um, that kind of hold on and, and things like that. And then there's other players that easily can just cut it off and yeah. they're on to a different part of their life. Um, and I don't know that that's gender specific or anything mm-hmm. like that. I think it, it, it just, it just depends on the individual, um, yeah. you know, and other people, you know, fill that void, I guess, of competition and whatever, by going into coaching, um, yeah. which you need play, you know, you need, X players to do that and things like that. Um, and yeah, there's some people that can just step away from it completely. Um, yeah. And those, I guess those players are more interesting me, <laughs> interesting to me than the ones that kind of continue on. Cause Agreed. you know, it is, it's, I guess, you know, as, as most things, if you're passionate about, um, you know, it's, it's hard to step away and, and yeah. sometimes, sometimes people struggle with it, but I, I think overall, um, 
most of the players that I've had been fortunate to work with at the college level have, have dealt with it pretty well. Yeah, um, I would agree. Like looking at all my teammates and stuff. Yeah, I think, you know, there's so many other things that that start to come into life, obviously, you know, partners and kids mm -hmm. and, and adulting in general that, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden start gobbling up your time and thoughts that, right. um, you know, that uh, you, you can move on. But it it is, I think for every player, there's, like you said, it, it could be injury, it could be, it, it, there there is a struggle, if it, you know, and some people it can be short term and other people maybe a little bit longer. And like you said, for me, you know, I've been in college, I was a college soccer coach for 20 years and um, that's what most people know me as is in my, in my adult life. So yeah. Yeah, certainly for me right now, it's a, it's a strange time to not introduce myself as that as right. a college coach, you know, right. um, which, so yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a process. And I think it's a process for anybody dealing with life change, you know, whether it's totally. soccer or any sport or career change going from college yeah. uh college students of being a professional and that can just be on the academic side as well so for sure yeah and I think it starts at a young age too because I always my identity was always wrapped up in sports from literally the the first memory I have as a, as a kid so I think it's important as a teenager to you know, find yourself outside of your sport, find other things, other friends outside of your sport, and just like build that confidence in yourself as a person. So what I mean by that is don't tie up your confidence in your accomplishments or what you've done, but, um, tie it up just in who you are as a, as a human being. So I think that's important. Yeah. I think as we, as we look back and I, I mean, I hadn't mentioned, but you know, my athletic prowess growing up in a small ski town was mm -hmm. not soccer necessarily. I was right. felt like as a pretty accomplished soccer player, but um, skiing was it. And for me, you know, I didn't maybe reach all the goals that I wanted to as an athlete. Um, but what I can do, and it, it very much speaks to what you're talking about is I look back at what I did as an athlete um, and I'm like, honestly proud of what I did, yeah. you know, because and I, like you said, I think it starts at an age where, you know, if you have the right focus and, and the process and some of those things become a real drive for you as a, as a person and as an athlete or even, you know, in academia, whatever it is, um, that it's easier to look back and go, okay, those are things that are important to me as a person, not just right as an athlete. You know, those are things that I learned and that's you know, what we always say about sport in general is it can teach us those good life lessons and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and it can, yeah, um, absolutely. if, if it happens, but it doesn't always, you know, we're not always, uh, getting those things into sports these days, I don't think. Sure. Um, and, and there's definitely a place for balance and, yeah. and things as a, as a, especially with the youth kids, Yeah, and my teams, my teams, you know, I, I'm very much, a Hey, do whatever you, you know, mm -hmm. okay. If you don't come, you don't come. Then now that may mean you have to take some more individual responsibility to keep pace right. with the team. But if you have orchestra pack practice and you have to miss practice, then so be it. Or if you're yeah. a basketball player as well, go, go do it. And we'll, yeah. we'll work together to figure out how to keep you up to pace. But yeah. those are all good things to, you know, to, to not get so wrapped up in one particular one thing is a good thing. I hear you. Yeah, for sure. So I want to, I want to kind of wrap this up with kind of one yeah. last, one last big question. I might have some other uh -huh. small questions, but one last big question. And I, I wanted to kind of form it around leadership because I think that's so incredibly important, but of all of the, the players that you've coached, like you've, you've coached a lot of really amazing leaders what are some of the big like commonalities or traits or characteristics you have seen in those leaders? Ooh, that's a tough one. A big question. <laughs> that is a big question. I think, ooh, I think, a, you know, there's certainly that leader by example, you know, that yep. player that just goes out there and grinds and, and at training and everything is the, is always, you know, if you ask everybody on the team who the hardest worker is and things like that, you know, almost everybody can answer. Um, so there's certainly those leaders. 
Um, but some of the, the best ones probably overall are ones that do those things, but then the ones that, you know, have an accountability to themselves um, yeah. and also will have hold the, you know, their teammates to a little bit of an accountability, mm -hmm. but in doing so, you know, not the like nasty, like, like, like Molly, like the, when you say that the first person that comes to my mind is Molly is like the accountability, you know, yeah. she would like, to, she would tell you straight and sometimes it hurt and, but you know, not to take it personally, but like, she was that like glue for the team. Yeah. But, but it was never, it was never personal for her, yeah, even exactly. though, even though some people may take, cause there, yeah. there are leaders, there are people that try to lead and, and do kind of make it personal mm -hmm, for sure. And, and, you know, that can be effective at times, but yeah, your best leaders are the ones that, you know, will lead by example, but also have the accountability, but, but do it in a very objective way. Yep. Um, you know, and I think you, it's funny cause you see, you see leadership at work at, at the youth levels, you know, and kind of that age of, you know, 11 to 13, where you kind of see the differences in the way different kids react to things. Cause you've got, especially yeah. on the, on the boys side, you got those boys that are just like yelling at each other, like, what are you doing? You know, that kind of yep. thing. When in fact, they just made the same mistake exactly. five seconds earlier. Um, and then, you know, almost the kind of that real personal attack part and then you've got some kids that are just real quiet and and you know grind away and yep. and other ones that will kind of be like hey you maybe need to do you know very very, very casual like, or very yeah. calm and, and not very assertive um but yeah the ones that ultimately are are the good ones are the ones that can you know lead by example and their actions on and off the field but then also you know help hold it other players accountable by with the objectivity, I guess, is, is the, you know, like yeah. you said, just kind of call it as it is and, mm -hmm. and, you know, communicate that, but not have it be like, you're an idiot or saying right. something like that, but just right. saying, Hey, I need you to do this. And if you do that, we're going to be better. Yeah. And I uh, think how, how, so someone might be asking, well, how do I make it so they don't take it personally? Well, I would say just from, if we're using the example of Molly is like, I, she always held herself accountable. So if yep. she would come up to me and, and yell at me, but then she wasn't doing it herself, then I would probably take it personally or wouldn't respond to it. But she was always the first one to take responsibility for herself. And so that's why it was like, it was okay, I guess, or I didn't like take offense to her, like getting in my face. Right. Well, so I think that's important. Yeah, for sure. Especially when you get to more of that college level is, you know, you'll have players that are great soccer players and leaders on the field but if they lack that accountability off the field yeah. in a sense um then it's hard for for players to take them serious on the field yeah absolutely so yeah there there's definitely the best leaders are very much self-accountable to their to their overall actions you know on the field off the field things like that and you see that at the professional level as well yeah and um, there's there's really great players that are never captains of their teams mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you hear, you know, that, you know, hey, they may be the most talented player out there, but, you know, they maybe make some poor decisions here and there. And that's yep. why they're not leading the team. Um, right. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's also, I think as Abby Wambach, I might get the quote wrong, but like, don't call yourself a leader on the field if you can't call yourself a leader on the bench or something like that. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, very much. Being like for me, junior year, I was not a, I wasn't a leader, period, but especially not on the bench. Right. So it's like being a leader in all areas, regardless of what's going on in your, in your circumstances, I guess that's important. Yeah. And she even, I think in that same book, like mentioned that how she didn't handle yeah. it well initially right. um, from, you know, and then understanding that, Hey, this is how I'm going to really help the team. And I think Carly Lloyd, you know, kind of had some of those same, <clears throat> you know, revelations or whatever because she had ups and downs as well um throughout her career with selection or or you know playing time and things like that and um yeah it's if if you want to if you want to lead yeah you definitely have to do it in in all aspects i love it i love it all right so 
if there's a player here who's listening, they just signed their NLI, they're getting ready to go to school. What's, what's one piece of uh, advice you'd give them before we end? Preparation. Preparation. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, but I had yeah. to ask. Be prepared. And, it, and it, you mm-hmm. know, I, I love that word just because it's something you can control, um, yep. you know, and, and, you know, it, it feels good, you know, and, and in the moment it hurts sometimes if you do all that preparation and you still don't get what you want. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, like we said, those are, those are things that are going to carry over, um, that you'll look back and feel good about in the long run, but also will give you tools to be successful in whatever you're, you're choosing to do, um, yeah. beyond athletics. So yeah, be prepared and, and use the resources that you, that yeah. are available to you. Don't, uh, you don't have to do it yourself, I guess. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I'll say, um, from personal experience, please be prepared. Otherwise it will be a living hell when you show up to campus. So I promise you doing the work now, doing the work early, you will be so incredibly grateful that you did. Cause if you don't, then your first, you know, couple of weeks, first couple of months, even maybe your first year is not going to be very fun. So put in the work early and you will thank Trevor and you'll thank yourself. <laughs> I think the early part is key there because a lot of people are like, yeah. oh yeah, I can start in, in June. And then you Maybe. go in July. Yeah. And then yeah. Wait, oh, it's July. Wait, I got a month. And then all of a sudden it's panic mode and that's not how you prepare. It's yeah. Preparation is a, is a year round. A long process. Process. Yeah. Cool. So. We'll, we'll, we'll end with that, but is there anything else, Trevor? I know you, you don't have to share if there's nothing, you know, you have going on, but anything you want to share that you have going on with maybe your new endeavor. I don't know where you are in that, but if you want to no, share nothing, nothing okay. to share yet, but I think, I mean, ultimately I think, you know, the soccer community is, is very close knit. And if someone wants help, there's people out there that can help, um, you know, both mentorship wise, you know, maybe an ex teammate or an alum or something like that. And, and that's not just for soccer, but, um, you know, can, can be for life as well and job hunting and, and those types of things. And, you know, um, maybe in the future, we'll be able to, to kind of help all those people connect and, and take advantage of this great soccer community that's sure. there. Um, so we'll see to be determined. Cool. But yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get back meantime, after it if we, yeah, if we'll, we'll, something. we'll share yeah. in the meantime, where, if there's like coaches or, you know, anyone that does want to connect with you right now, just to connect with you as a, as a coach, where can they do that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm on I'm on Instagram, that kind of stuff, but it's more of a, I have a photography uh, little hobby kind of thing, so I, I use that more to post pictures either of my dog or or landscapes. Yeah. But um, if someone would want to email me and just have have questions or something, um, just a, just an email at tntsoccerconsulting.com or no. Sorry. TNT you got it. Soccer consulting at gmail.com. Oh, at gmail.com. Yeah, the gmail part is important, I guess. I, I don't <laughs> have a website yet. Um, but, and then if anyone wanted to ask anything, obviously I think they could go through you and, and yeah. we could connect and for sure. And I could help out with somebody if, if need be. But uh, awesome. yeah, always happy to help. I mean, ultimately, as coaches, you know, the, the results and the competition and all that kind of stuff is, is fun and exciting. But but long term, it's it's really being able to, you know, to create relationships and help help people, you know, achieve their goals, you know, soccer wise, academic wise, all that type of stuff. So yeah. I'm happy to, to be a resource if anyone wants to to reach out. You're the best, Trev. And thank you for, you know, it's been how many years, 10 years, almost 10 years since I graduated. And like I said, you still reach out we're still you know homies and everything so i appreciate you taking the time to and i know i'm not the only one who you you know continue to talk to so big props to you for you know being a good (laughs) example of what a freaking awesome coach does um so yeah thank you so much for coming on it was an awesome conversation so appreciate you coming on 